Hey ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gratzel here, and in this new series, we're gonna learn about Adobe Illustrator. In this first video, we're just gonna familiarize ourselves with the Adobe Illustrator interface. We're gonna look around, see where things are located so that we can find them, and then just know the terminology so when I use it in future videos, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about and where it's at. We'll also do a little bit of customization of the interface as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Here is our Adobe Illustrator kind of startup interface. So whenever you open Illustrator, this is kind of what you're gonna see. Uh, very similar to Photoshop. You've got your Create New and your Open buttons over here. And if you've been working in Illustrator, you've got some recent documents down below. I'm gonna go ahead and click Create New. And you'll see that the dialog box that opens up, again, looks very similar to what you would see in Photoshop. So you've got your presets up here. So if you had a mobile design, web, print, film, video, you can click on those and it's got some preset sizes for your document. You've also got some recent ones. So if you've used it quite a bit, there's some here as well. Uh, you can see I, this one for print is 10 by 10, so it's kind of a square. I've done some graphics for Instagram, so that's a square format. You're eight and a half by 11. And then these are just some custom sizes. Um, you can see some of them say PX for pixels and some of them say inches. So again, I'll show you how over here, what that means and why you would change that. So over here to our right, you would have your title. So you can call it a new document or whatever you'd like to call it. And then here are your sizes, your width and your height. So you can change those in by typing it, or again, you can click on these different presets and it automatically changes it. Or again, like I said, you can type it in by hand. And then over here is your measurements. So I typically stick with inches. That's because we're, we're all familiar with, but sometimes depending on the asset that you're creating, you might need to change it. For example, if you're creating a YouTube thumbnail design, or if you're creating something for YouTube or Twitter, they have a specific pixel size that they use. Uh, I'm pretty sure this, 256 or 2560, I'm sorry, by 1440 is like a YouTube header page, right? So like that little banner that you'd see on the head of a YouTube channel, that's kind of the sizes. So you'd have to change this to pixels so that you type in the right numbers. So let's say I click on this one, right? 2560 to 1440 pixels. If I change it to inches, you can see it's 35 inches by 20 inches, right? So you can change it back to inches once you're there, but I would always set it to pixels and then change it to what you need to, depending on the asset. You can change the orientation here. So horizontal or landscape or vertical, which would be portrait artboards, which we're gonna talk about in the next video. But if you know you're gonna use multiple artboards in a design ahead of time, you can change that here, that setting, but you can change that once, you're open, once you've opened up Illustrator. So not a huge deal. Um, a bleed, we'll talk about that when we get into printing things, but a bleed is just kind of a little, outside border that you put on for images to bleed off the edge. So when you want them trimmed and you want things going to the edge of it, you put that there. But again, that's specific to a design. You can get into that later on. Some of the other advanced options, you click on this here and then you can do color mode. This is really important. Uh, if I were doing a design for Instagram or YouTube, that is digital, right? That's gonna be on a computer screen, on a mobile device. So you wanna use the RGB color mode because that's what you use for digital devices. If I was designing something that's gonna be a print poster or package design, I would change that to CMYK because that is print color. If you are sticking with RGB color, screen is what you wanna keep it at, 72 pixels per inch. That's your resolution, your raster effects for that. But if you're at CMYK, you would want to change that to 300. That's really important to do that, okay? You'll notice too, I don't know if you saw that, but when I was on pixels and I click CMYK, right? This little thing popped up here and it says, hey, this color mode you chose is different. So when you're choosing pixels, it's assuming you're working on digital stuff, stuff for mobile devices or digital. So you wanna keep it RGB mode. So by changing it, it's telling you, hey, that's not the right one. So it's saved for print. So just recognize that if you see that, that might be why that maybe the format you're using uh, is registered or it's recognizing it as a digital. And so it's going to want to go automatically to RGB. So if you change that, just be aware of that. Just want to kind of give you a heads up on that. So we'll stick with eight and a half by 11 for now and hit create. And here is the Adobe Illustrator interface. Again, very similar in its layout as Photoshop. I really like how Adobe does that, tries to keep things fairly similar. 
every program is going to be slightly different because there's different things that you do with it. But for the most part, especially with these design elements, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, they're very similar so that you can find things relatively quickly. It's not a huge learning curve. So across the top here, we have our drop down menus. You've got file, which is kind of your basics of opening, saving things, placing images, exporting them, printing uh, your edit. So editing things, copy, pasting things, going through stuff like that. Objects. Objects are used quite a bit. So whenever you're working with an object, whether it's a shape or something you've created on the artboard there in your design, you can do a lot of different things from it. So you can lock it, you can group it together, you can expand it. And we'll talk about that when we talk about um, strokes and things like that. But then there's different things you can do with the path, the shape, you can create patterns, you can do blend modes. So you can create really cool blended effects with your designs. So a lot of cool different things in the object drop down menu here. Type is obviously for typography. So anytime you're using type, this is where you'd find a lot of those things. So typing on a path, resizing, fonts, things like that. Your select drop-down menu. Um, I gotta admit, I don't really use this very much, but there's probably some things on here I should really learn how to use a little bit more. I'm looking at start global edit. There's probably some really good things with recoloring things using your global colors. So I've gotta learn a little bit more about that, but that select drop-down menu is there. Your effects, this is where you can do some special effects with different layers and things in there. You can distort them, create different things, create effects, warp, pixelate. Um, view mode, I use that a little bit. So if you wanna show the design in certain ways, so you can do what's called an outline mode. Uh, so if you wanna see if things line up, if they're touching each other edges, you use an outline mode. Um, also, what you're gonna find the most, I think here, besides going to outline mode, is gonna be clicking your smart guides, creating guides. So the little blue lines to show you, like maybe if you're measuring something out, you want them all lined up, you can create guides this way. Um, you can scroll down here and you can show a grid. You can snap to grid. So these are really good when you're drawing anchor points or creating shapes, you can snap it. So it snaps to that grid that's back there to create more uniform designs. Snap to pixels, so that's the pixel edges. And then also snap to points, so that could be your anchor points. So these are probably the features you're gonna use the most in this menu there, this view menu. And then your window drop down menu, just like in Photoshop, it has all of your workspace panel options. So you can see here, there's all these different workspace panel options and they're all in alphabetical order. So if you're like, where's the stroke? It's under S for stroke. So it's all right there. So a lot of different things you can do that's your workspace panel options. And then over here to our right is our workspace panel. So again, just like in Photoshop, you can customize this. So once you click on the little icon, that little workspace panel opens up and you can organize it and move it and delete things if you don't use something. So if I don't use this symbols panel, I can pull it out by grabbing the tab and pulling it away. And that little X pops up, I can get rid of it. I can add different things, go to my windows panel. Let's say I wanna put my flattened preview window and I wanna add it so I can drag it over when it turns blue, that's how you know you're adding it to that tab there and it pops it in. And now that flattened preview is a part of this little window area. Um, if that's not open, let's just say, get this here. Let's say that's not open. You can do the same thing by grabbing this tab and pulling it over and into, and see how this little box is now like a blue around there. It's telling me, hey, in this grouping, that's where you want it. Or maybe I want it down here with my colors, or this is like my tech stuff. Or maybe I want to put it up here with like my appearances and all that. So I can stick it in there. And there it is, and now it's all attached. So that is how you can add and subtract workspace panels from your workspace panel. Over here to our left is our toolbar. You can see there's some similar things in here. We've got selection, direct selection tool, but we got some more features, your pen tools, type tool, shape builder, shape tool, I'm sorry. And then just all kinds of different features. So the tools in here are different. They're just more for design, for illustration than they are for Photoshop. Photoshop, those are more photo editing and creation. Obviously you can still do digital design artwork in Photoshop, but this does, has more vector based shape tools and things like that in here. So this is where you'd find that. And then your swatches down here that you can switch out. And then your artboard right here in the middle. Uh, one more thing I want to show you guys. Oh, almost forgot your control panel. So remember in Photoshop, whatever tool you're selected on, your control panel will change. So obviously I'm drawing some anchor points and now my control panel right here changes. So now I can modify the controls of that tool that I'm working with, whatever it might be. 
So now I get rid of that. You can see my control panel changes again once I've switched tools. So this is really helpful uh, to control the different features of whatever tool that you have selected. One last thing in our edit dropdown menu, I'm gonna go down to preferences. And then I'm gonna go to general. And so what we do here is, I'm just kind of showing you how, And one last thing I want to show you about the interface here is how to kind of maybe customize it a little bit more. So as you begin to use Illustrator, uh, you just kind of maybe pick up on some things from some other videos you watch or some other artists, or maybe there's some things you want to customize to fit your style a little bit more. If you go to the edit drop down menu and you click on preferences, you can see you can modify and customize this whole interface and this whole program based on what you want. Uh, I'm going to start with general, just kind of work our way down. So in general, you can do a lot of different things here. You can click some of these different ones, use precise cursors. Uh, some of these I've never touched or worked with because I don't really need to worry about them. The one I want to point you out to is this one over here, scale, stroke, and effects. So this is really helpful. I keep this checked. Um, the reason for that is if you, let's say you create a circle with a five point weight stroke and I resize that down, if this is unchecked, it's gonna stay at five and that circle is gonna get really small, right? So you're gonna have this huge thick stroke and this really tiny circle, it's gonna look really weird. So by clicking this right here, it'll scale the weight of that stroke depending on the size of that circle. So it keeps it proportional is basically what that's doing. So just wanna bring that to your attention. That's a really important one to look at. Um, some other things to think about, maybe just the units, it'll always default to inches. You can always do that. Your stroke will always be points and type is points. I keep those the way they're at. But again, if you wanted to modify that and change it to picas or pixels, you can totally do that. Guides and grids. So you can change the color of your guides and what they look like. So if you want dots instead of lines, um, you can change that there. You can change the color of the guides. The grid, again, you can change the color of the grid. And then you can change the style of the grid. So you can use dots and lines as well. That, And then you can change how your grid works. So every quarter of an inch I have it set at is, is my grid. So that's what I have it set up as. It's kind of like light orange. So that's kind of in the background. And then your smart guides. So smart guides are, I always have smart guides checked for the most part. Um, that just helps me find certain things. So as I'm working through, and you'll see in other videos, how that works, but it shows up in like this magenta pink of like, hey, you're on this anchor point or this is the edge here and you'll see lines pop up. So this is really helpful. So whatever color you see best would be really good for that one. The last one I wanna show you is this user interface. So this, you can actually change the color. So right now I have this one set on like the lightest color, but you can actually change the color of your interface and make it like super dark super light. It's really what you prefer with that. So that's kind of cool. Some people like working on a darker background so the images stand out better. Um, so it's totally up to you, but you can customize that. So that's just some few customizable things. You can dig through this a little bit more. Those are just the ones that I've referred to or I've used uh, to edit and change some things around. Um, I really haven't used much other than that, but if you want to explore that, you can as well. But those are just some basics of how to customize your interface in Adobe Illustrator. So until next time, I'm Mr. Gratzel. Take care, guys.